Hey guys, what's up? My name is Adam, aka Antecena Guy. I'm going to leave a link for you to my main channel in the description so that those of you who are fans of Lorenzo, Barry, Spike, the BDF network, the Hood Gang network, or any type of network that relates to this Lorenzo story, well, the link's below. All right? But this is a documentary now on the Lorenzo story. We're going to be here for about an hour, guys, and babes. I'm going to talk to you about the introduction, the characters. Um, Spike and Barry Lorenzo, Bobby Dunn Funkin, um, you know, Anonymous something. I'm going to be talking briefly about all the characters. I'm also going to tell you about the first story, the second story, and also beyond the scenes, um, the fans who've gone into this documentary, and of course the future of the channels. Okay. Now, first I'm going to tell you a little bit myself. My name's Adam. I um, play the following characters. Lorenzo the Dead. Um, Buddy the Bunny. Spike Hazard and Barry Stoner. Yes, I'll play all those characters. Many of you would say, are you trying to insult our fucking intelligence? Well, you'd be surprised about some people out there are um, not so bright. I'm not trying to insult the intelligence or anything. Some people think the camera's angles were that good. They thought that was all separate people. But now the fact is, it was all camera tricks. It was all camera angles. And I play all of the characters. I play Spike Hazard, Barry Stoner, Buddy the Bunny, and of course Lorenzo the Dead. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go on ramble on about the fact that, um, you know who Bubba Dunn Funkin is on the BDF network. He's an awesome guy. I'm not going to mention his name because he doesn't want it public, but I've also left the um, link to his channel in the description. Please subscribe to him because if it wasn't for him, there would be no storyline, you know, in this particular category or anything like that. I've also left you the link of um, the Hood Gang Network in the description also. He's also going involved with the stories also. So it was nice to make friends with these guys. They're both very big YouTube fanatics and they like creating characters and stories and things like that. Okay. So um, let's get into a little bit about how it all came about. Well, I was a fan of the BDF Network. I love Bubba Dunn Funkin. He's my favourite character. I love Green Psycho 17. I love all the characters that um, the user has created. And I thought to myself, I'd love to do something like that one day. It's, it's overwhelming to know that how many, so many people on YouTube have been inspired by the BDF network to create their own characters. I noticed that a lot during the, so the stories of Lorenzo. Um, people started to create their own characters, you know, wear their own masks and trying to get involved with the story, which was great. Don't get me wrong, he's inspired so many, and I think that's what makes his channel so special. It's just the fact that, um, you know, it was just like an inspiring thing. I think he inspired Hood Gang Network as well. Because Hood Gang Network seems to have similar characters and um, computer animations and things like that. Um, so it, it was like overwhelming to know that it's inspired so many to create their own characters and all that kind of shit, so... Okay, we're going to get into the first chapter now of this documentary, everybody. Spike and Barry. I'm going to talk to you about Spike Hazard and Barry Stoner. Right, Spike Harry, well, bleh. Spike Hazard and Barry Stoner. Okay. If it wasn't for the BDF network, there would be no Barry Stoner or Spike Hazard. You know, I got into contact with the BDF network a long time ago. I was a big fan of his videos commenting on his videos, watching all his videos, and we got into contact, talking back and forth and all that kind of stuff. And he inspired me to make the first character, which was Sp Spike Hazard. You know, I own some masks. I've got some mask collections, you know, and um, I thought to myself, you know, why not put these masks to use? And I'm going to show you right here. Here's Spike Hazard's mask. Okay, this is the mask of Spike Hazard. Yeah, we all know who he is in real life. It's Freddy Krueger. But, you know, you can make, you can be creative with any type of mask. You can simply, I you know, put a hat on him, a necklace, some shades, make him look cool or gangster-like. And that's what I did with Spike Hazard. Okay. Now, a little bit about Spike Hazard's story real quick. Spike Hazard grew up in the hood. Um, I wouldn't say he's much of a loner, but he's more of like a gangster-style type of character. He's like, um, how can I put it, like your Eminem sort of type of character. Swearing, doing drugs, and 
drive by shootings, prostitution, all that kind of stuff. So he's an interesting character. But um, just like the BDF Network, he grew up loving the WWE as a kid. He rants on WWE, just like the BDF Network and the Hood Gang Network. So they had a lot in common. So that's how I think they became friends so easy. I think that's how the chemistry all got together. Okay. But Spike Hazard doesn't take shit from nobody. Um, but at the same time, he's a friendly guy. I say he's a friendly guy, but doesn't like take... No shit from anybody. I mean, he grew up in the hood, in the ruins, you know. We all know what happens in the hood. Graffiti atmosphere and drive-by shootings, drug wars, gang wars, prostitution violence, sexual activity and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he's a real loner, but um, there's one thing you can't stand. It's people who bully others or um, look down on other people. And I think that's a situation why you hated Lorenzo so much. Lorenzo the dead. Now the character, I just, I just put the mask on, played around with the mask a bit, you know, putting shades on him, wearing a hoodie, and you went from Freddy Krueger into the Spike Hazard character, you know. And he talks like this, got this deep voice. Fucking hate WWE, you know. He's got this deep, ranting voice that fits so perfectly with the character. Now Barry, on the other hand. Barry was much more easy. I was playing myself, you know, I've got the beard. This is Barry's beard. Um, of course, he also wears a wig and this hat. This, this is actually a works hat. This is years old. This is why it's so scruffy and shitty and all that kind of stuff. So, But Barry, he's not much different from Spike. Um, the only thing with Barry is he's good friends with Spike because Barry grew up in the hood, but on the streets. And, um, of course, he's an alcoholic, a druggie. Grew up in the hood, in the ruins, in the streets. Spiked my friends with him one day by sharing his vodka and giving him a cigarette or, you know, did drugs with him. They like, like basically became best friends. And, of course, this atmosphere around you looks um, familiar because I call this the hideout of Spike and Barry, where, in reality, they've moved in together as friends. And this is like a hideout, basically, the hideout in the hood. In reality, this is just me in my bedroom, in a normal street, in a normal neighbourhood, you know, in a normal city, you know, where I live. So it's not much different from your bedroom or mine or anything like that. It's just a hideout, as I used to call it. And Spike and Barry live together as friends. Okay. Barry, on the other hand, likes to rant on the other hand. He's... Um, I should say he's an interesting character. I'd say I like to like to play Barry more than Spike. I think that's only because I don't like the effort of taking the mask on and off all the time. Now, I've got to be careful because this is behind scene. Nobody knows this about the public yet. This mask is faulty. This is a faulty mask. If you look behind the ear, it's slightly torn. You know, that's why I don't like wearing this mask so much because I'm afraid I'm going to completely wear it out. It just happened one day where I was being silly and... I put the mask on wrong and I took it off wrong and it, it turned. My own stupid fucking fault. And that's why I still wear this mask to conventions, horror conventions and things like that. But, you know, I thought to myself it'd be much more better using it as like a YouTube persona thing, you know. Because I just figured it would be much more easy that way and much more, you know, interesting. But with Barry, it's much more simple. You just simply put the beard on. The jacket, the hat, the wig, and it's much more easier taking on and off, on and off, and all that kind of stuff. So, so there's your two little introductions about um, Barry and Spike. Other than they're just two worthless bums who live in the streets and grew up in the hood, you know, and they actually um, have a lot in common with one another living in this dumpster of a, um, of a hideout. They both live in poverty and I think that's why they love each other and share each other so common. But the most spend much time watching the BDF network, getting ideas and fans and something to rant on. But the two beloved characters, they've gave um, they've gained a lot of subscribers, but a lot, a lot of that's food to do with the BDF network. If it wasn't for the BDF network, there would be no spike and barry in the hood. None at all. 
Now we're gonna go on to the character that everyone's talking about. Greetings. I am Lorenzo. Many people at first didn't think I played Lorenzo. They thought he was a different different guy playing him. But no, it wasn't long, it was me. And the only reason why you didn't see Lorenzo in this room atmosphere was because he would give the um give it away. In reality, I'm just um, in my front living room when I'm recording the Lorenzo videos because, you know, you, you can't have been in the same room otherwise people will start to predict and question too much. But here we go. We're moving on to Lorenzo now. Again, this is behind the scenes stuff. Here's Lorenzo's mask. Now, this mask was expensive. We're talking 250, 300 pounds for... This clown mask, because it is a clown. Many people would say it's a jester, but more of like a clown. Now, I saw this online one day and I absolutely fed up with it. And I'm absolutely fell in love with it because in reality, I love my horror films. I love killer clowns and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to have this as part of my collection. And indeed I did. Now, Lorenzo, on the other hand, as you would say, is like completely, totally different from... Spike and Barry in different ways. He's a rich clown, looks down on others. He's not much of a WWE fanatic or anything like that. He just likes to talk his nose down at others because he's got money. And if he sees anybody on welfare or anybody on money, it disgusts him because he can't bear the fact that people are making more money than, than him for all the wrong reasons. You know, Lorenzo on the other hand. Now, when I've got this Lorenzo mask, Around that time, I was really deeply into the BDF network. But the one thing that inspired me for to make a feuding video within the BDF network was actually Bubba Dunn Funkin versus Peck Sullivan Peter. Now, I love that feud. And I thought to myself, man, I'd love to do something like that with a friend. Because I love to entertain. I love to, um, you know, make people laugh. You know, and all those other things. Spare me one moment while I go to this. Um, so I'm just yeah. So Lorenzo, snobby character, um, loves to look down, look down his nose at others. For those of you, for those who aren't very rich, and he thought he was doing everyone a favour when he first made his debut. I remember when he first made his debut. People were leaving comments down like saying, "Okay, who the fuck is this?" Straight away, he annoyed people. He got under people's skin. And that was the reception I was looking for for Lorenzo. I didn't want him to be one of those characters I've fallen in love with. The people don't like snobbish, royalty rich people. You know, I thought to myself, what's the first thing I could do to annoy people? And the richness was like kind of my first idea. Because so I'm not going to lie, my father's got, in reality, my father's got money. He's got motorbikes, he's got cars, he's got several houses, which he rents out. And I'm following in my father's footsteps. That's why our living room looks so nice and decorated and things like that. I thought if I could just get the setting right, it would match Lorenzo. Unlike this room where I give out my personal side of how I like to live. But as you can see, Lorenzo's videos were never shot in this room because it's Baron Spike's hideout. Um, so I thought to myself, how... Me and because see me and the BDF network started to get into conversations by this time, and he encouraged me all along to get a character that would annoy people and make them PG. Because that's the way everything is now PG. Life sucks at the moment. It's all PG wrestling, PG music, PG TV shows, YouTube's even PG. You know, everything's all PG now, and that's what annoys people. So to get someone to represent the PG product. Under a clown, and someone who's rich would combine them both together, would make, you know, something really good. But he's got everything. He's got everything from P PG and richness running through his veins. He talks in that posh voice like, Greetings, I am Lorenzo. <laughs> oh, Bubba Don Funkin, you are on welfare. You know? He's talking, um, you know, PG looking down at others. You see, the way he looks at the Bubba Dump from family is like everybody else. 
because Jim Funkin, his father, and Bubba Dunn Funkin, Green Soccer 17, all that, they haven't got much money. They ran on the PG product of WWE, and um, he thinks they've got a lot of time on their hands collecting welfare money. And he hates them because of it, you know. But again, everyone's less fortunate than others. But he doesn't see things like that. He thinks that everyone should be the same working wise in the same class. So that's why he hates Bubba and Funkin's family so much. Is because he it reminds him of the welfare system and the fact that he doesn't like paying taxes. Because that's one of the biggest problems in the world today. It's the welfare system. And um, some people are on it for the right reasons. Some people are on welfare for the wrong reasons. But in his mind, he thinks everyone's on it for all the wrong reasons. Which is um, unfortunate, but again, that's Lorenzo all over for you. Okay. Moving on a bit more. Next chapter the BDF Network and the Hood Gang Network. I got in touch with the BDF Network first, and I was noticing all these comments on his videos from the Hood Gang Network. And I said to him, Who is the Hood Gang Network? And BDF Network introduced me to him. We made friends through Facebook and we kept each other in contact through Texas. He says, wouldn't it be great if all three of us were involved in a storyline? Because we've got our own characters. Some of the characters are loved, some of them are hated. It'd be good if we all worked together as a team to, um, you know, try and make a good storyline. But I had to be careful what I was doing at the time because... I've got two jobs. Well, I did at the time. I had two jobs and I'm running a business. So just finding time to make these videos was like really challenging. Um, I don't know how BDF Network works or Gang Network, their time schedules, but with mine it was much more tighter. So I didn't want to get into a storyline and then give them the impression that I was going to back out of it because that would be really unfair. And plus with fans watching, and subscribers, they're getting into the storylines, and to get them wasting their time by viewing was just completely unfair. And I'm not that type of guy. I'm not the type of guy that would make a promise or make a start on something and leave it unfinished. You know. But by the time then, I was making um, Spike Hazard videos every now and then. Barry, the Barry Stone character wasn't introduced till later on. It was just Spike Hazard. Spike Hazard was the first character. Barry didn't come along until further on down the line but um of course you had your green psycho 17s your beat it your bubble and funkins your jim funkins and then you have the anonymous something and all his characters i got talking to both guys and i said to myself look let's make a video let's make a feud you know bdf network's already got the experience they did it with peck salam on peter and Anonymous Something had these um, videos where he was fighting and feuding with characters. And I said, I'd like to get involved in that. It's my first time. I'm not going to probably be no expert, but I'll give it a go. So I started taking the Lorenzo character more seriously. And um, again, he started to slag off others, saying watching WWE is a waste of time. You should be all out working, earning money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I started leaving comments on the BDF Network um, videos for Bubba and Bunkin saying, get a job and stop living on welfare, you know, stop living off tax money, which I go to work and work, go, to go to work for and all that kind of stuff. And then he responded by um, sending me threats. People, the fans were reading the comments. I was responding to Lorenzo to send him all this hate mail, which was good. I mean, some fans took it really personally. <laughs> Some people were saying things like, die Lorenzo, and all that kind of stuff. And I was overwhelmed of how people were taking this character so seriously. I mean, it was all about fun and entertainment. And I think at the back of their minds, I was just having fun. But you got to be careful, because some people on the online are, you know, they take things too seriously. And, you know, it was... Um, it was like an experience to be hated so many. And I was trying to make people hate me so much. But it turned to hate mail. It turned to offensive comments. It turned to people forming down my videos, leaving me comments on my, on my page about Lorenzo and all that kind of stuff. So um, it, was, it was something overwhelming. So I thought to myself, I said to the BDF Network, let's think of some ideas. 
to um, really get this into a storyline. And uh, let's try and get the whole gang network in on it. So we can um, make, make the storyline even more interesting, you know. We want to be fair to everybody. So me and the BDF network got talking. And um, we said to ourselves, right, what's the first thing we can do? We've already slagged off Bubba Dunn Funky and the family, talking about them on welfare. The BDF network was going on about hating John Cena and all that kind of stuff and all the other PG superstars in the WWE Universe world. And uh, I said to myself, okay, I'll continue to make Lorenzo videos like with him being rich, without, with him giving snobbish, um, what's the word for it, snobby messages so people will hate me even more. And then he, he was getting revenge in his own way on the BDF network by like burning down Bubba Dump from the BDF um, network's grocery store, which Bubba Dump Funkin's mum and he used to shop to. Torching Jim Funkin's weed supply man. You know? So Green Psycho 17 was struggling without his weed. You know, and... Me and the BDF network were going back and forth with all these ideas. But we wanted to get the whole gang networking on a other reason. So we thought to ourselves, he emailed me an idea saying, we will make Lorenzo a coward because he won't commit these crimes all on his own. Let's give him a henchman. And I thought to myself, okay, a henchman. Okay, called Crazy Skull. That would give the the, um, the whole gang network a role to work on, make his own videos, and so who got, so Lorenzo was paying Crazy Skull in all these crimes because Lorenzo was so much of a coward he didn't want to like um, do all these crimes all on his own, and he didn't want to commit the crimes to that so that make him look innocent. He paid people to do the dirty work for him, so that was a role for um, you know for the whole gang network. He, he played the crazy school character, and I think he played it off really well. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I think BDF Network and the whole gang network do better videos than me. Because I'm not up to date with all this technology and all this shit and, you know, all these great thumbnails and all these computer animations. I just have my camera and cut off studio, movie making studio, and that's about it. They've got more up to date stuff than me. Okay, so we're going back and forth with all these storylines, all these feuds, all these video responses. The bottom line, the fans were really getting into it. And around this time, it was around winter. And we think to ourselves, right, we've torched Jim Funkin's weed supply van. Green Psycho 17 is struggling. Bobby Dunn Funkin's mum's um, grocery store has been burned down. We've got Lorenzo slagging off um, the, the, uh, the Bobby Dunn Funkin family. We've got um, the Hood Gang Network um, causing chaos. You know, we thought to ourselves, what can we do? What can we do to Mon finally make Lorenzo shut the fuck up, basically? And uh, I was thinking, what can we do? Because this was a difficult time. Because I was working hard, doing overtime at work. And around this time, it was getting near Christmas. You know, and Christmas, you don't want to be online making videos and doing stories and all that kind of stuff. You want to enjoy the Christmas season, I don't know, getting party and getting drunk or, you know, doing whatever you want to do around Christmas. You don't want to sit at a computer on YouTube all day. So we said, let's do a right. How can we finally get Lorenzo's comeuppance? Obviously, Bobby Dunn Funkin can't kill him. Obviously, Green Cycle 17 can't kill him. Um, the whole gang network put up a genius idea of having Christ School killed off first by Anonymous Something, and he did. And if you look at the end of his video, they took a key out of um, out of his pocket, which led to Lorenzo's mansion, and saying, "Okay, Spy Castle can use that key to invade his mansion and then get his revenge." That was an idea of mine, of, of, like like a long time ago. I mean, I said to myself, you know, that's one way how we can get our hands on Lorenzo. 
if Spike has a pay as a visit because Bubba can't do it and Adam Sunday can't do it because they're in different countries. <laughs> Don't get, we're just all friends on, on the internet, you know, making all these random stories. At the end of the day, it was all down to me. But by this time, it was um, getting towards near Christmas and I couldn't do no skits outside because it was snowing and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, it was left up to me. So I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to make a final video called The End of Lorenzo. And it's available on two channels, the Spike and Barry Network and the Lorenzo channel. Just type in The End of Lorenzo and it should come up. So we've got everything called um, Spike Hazard had the key to the mansion. He had a gun. So this was the final time to get the hands on Lorenzo. Okay, I found this time really busy because I managed to get two days off work this one evening because the weather was that bad we couldn't go in because I work outdoors, you see. And um, I had to wait till I get the house alone. My father was out doing something and I said to myself, all right, I'm going to make one whole day of trying to make this work. So I did. I got up early one morning. My father was out of the house and um, I said to myself, right, it's time to the end of Lorenzo. It's a scene where Spike Hazard is um, going out of the um, of an attachment of the house called well, in England we call it a conservatory, but I don't know how they call it in other countries. But anyway, it was you could see it was snowing like hell outside. I got inside my dad's work van and was like, "Okay, Lorenzo, time for you to pay, motherfucker." I turned on the radio and the music, the, the, the Christmas music came on, but in reality I wasn't going anywhere. It was just all computer tricks and. Then I put on the Lorenzo mask and started to do his skits. Okay. Now, here's a little bit of a controversy that happened. Hug Gang Network gave me the impression that he wasn't going to kill Crazy Skull off. So if you notice, Lorenzo's on the phone saying um, something like... Um, he was, like, congratulating, saying... Thank you. Here's, here's your reward, $150,000. You're getting in your account first thing in the morning. In reality, he was talking to Crazy Skull. But this is the thing that got me annoyed. The Hood Gang Network gave me the impression that I wasn't going to kill off Crazy Skull until later. He says, I'm not going to kill off Crazy Skull because we had, we had so much um, fun with the character. They wanted to keep him alive. So I recorded him saying, congratulations, Crazy Skull. So although Lorenzo was going to die first, just like Crazy Skull to deal with. But then he texts me saying, oh, I've already filmed it. I've killed off Crazy Skull. I was like, you're fucking joking. I've got to re-record the whole scene again. You know, and he says, I'm sorry, man. I, I, you know, he, he was open about it. He apologised. But I had the impression that he was going to keep Crazy Skull alive. But, um... That wasn't the case. And I was like, nah, now I've got to replay all the fucking scenes again. But that wasn't the case. Um, I managed to cut out just a little bit of the start of that scene. You know, the little start of that scene. As you can notice, he's talking on the phone, but he doesn't mention Crazy Skull's name. That's only because I edited the video at the end when I fully made it all. Which was not a bad idea, but in reality now, we're thinking this could be a term for the future because on the telephone, he's not talking to Crazy School now. He's talking to um, the Sidious, the gruesome. But that was a story for another day. The fans were saying, who was he talking to? Lorenzo talking to on the phone before he was murdered? <laughs> we may never know that, but at the time, we didn't think we was going to make a sequel to Lorenzo coming back from the dead at the time. So it was a question who he was going to be talking on the phone to. Okay, so Spike comes in, he threatens Lorenzo with the gun, and he fatally shoots him. Don't forget he's human, he's not immortal at this time. Spike has a fatally shoots him, he gets shot half to fucking death. And then, um, it, was a much, it was a simple skip. I really wish I could have put more effort into it if I could turn back the clock, but I wasn't aware that fans were going to be really into this storyline. I didn't know people were going to be really into Lorenzo. And all that stuff. People were emailing me saying, Lorenzo's a great villain. You should have kept him alive. You should have made it longer. You know. 
But I wasn't aware, but there was a part of me that wanted to get the story online over and done with so I could pursue things in my personal life, like my job and all that. And I, I had no idea people were going to get into the Lorenzo character so much. Which, like I say, I'm not the biggest film editor in the world, I'm not the biggest actor in the world, or entertainer like the BDF network or the um, little gang network. So I wasn't aware of how it was all going to turn out. But anyway, we killed off Lorenzo, and <laughs> so I'm going to be honest with you guys, this mask, Lorenzo mask, it's not the most comfortable mask to wear. It's, it's, it's very thick um, material. All like the spine mask. This this is very thin. I think that's one of the reasons why it rips so easy because it was it was so thin. But this is really thick and it's really sweaty and much more harder to wear. But uh, that was the way it was. We killed off Lorenzo and Bobby don't fucking celebrated. And Crazy School was killed off. So we all went our separate ways after that. So we thought to ourselves, you know, we've done the story, we've done what people wanted. You know, we can't do any more than that. So we went our own ways and we went for a break for, for about a month. But the saddest thing that happened to me was I lost my job. Uh, in reality, I just got made redundant. There was no reason for me to lose my job. I just got made redundant. It was just one of those things. So I had more time on my hands, and I thought to myself, you know, what can we do now? What can we do? So around this time, I ordered myself an Easter Bunny um, outfit for Easter, the future Easter. So I attend these memorabilia and these um, character Comic Cons. And... Um, I had an Easter Bunny outfit, and of course it was a really good quality one. That's when I came up with the character Buddy the Bunny. Hello, children. My name is Buddy the Bunny. I thought to myself, you know, I've got an, a Lorenzo account now, which is empty, and no videos have been uploaded to it. So I thought to myself, what better way to, um, you know, proceed somehow with the account with a new character. So I kind of put Buddy the Bunny in it. I created a PG character, just like Peck Salomon Peter. You know, and straight away, I was amazed at how many people watched the video of Buddy the Buddy debuting. Because I thought to myself, okay, do we all subscribe now that Lorenzo's dead or what? What do we do? But people watched the video and straight away they gave it thumbs down and saying, he's worse than Lorenzo. You know, fuck that bunny. You know, blah, 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 you know. And all this hate mail again and all this, you know, all this hatred. You know, I created a few videos, but at the same time, I was still busy looking for work and I eventually found a new job. And at the same time, I still had Spike Hazard's character. That's the problem with all these characters. You don't have time to play them all, depending on what your schedule is in real life. Um, you know, I was... I had I, I Buddy the Bunny, I had Spike has it's on my main channel where I create other things. It's, it's, it's in the description if you want to subscribe to my real channel. Just go ahead, click on it, subscribe to it, do what you're going to do. Also, the, the um, Spike and Barry in the Hood network and all that kind of stuff, but um, and the whole gang network. But um, I had the Buddy the Bunny character, and I didn't really know what to do with it. I started a feud again with the BDF network with the Buddy the Buddy character. It just wasn't working. It just wasn't working. And I, it seemed like a good idea at the time. I just woke up one morning and said, I'm going to annoy everybody. I'm going to have a PG character. And people did get annoyed by it. They were thumbing down the videos and all that kind of stuff. That's exactly the reaction I wanted from all the subscribers and all the people of the YWC. But I just wasn't happy of keeping the BDF, uh, the, um, the Buddy the Buddy character going. Um, I don't know, it was just the time. I did not have the time to keep pissing about. So anyhow, I made, I made the character part-time. 
because I was still making videos on my main channel and um, I was still friends with the BDF network and the whole gang network and all that kind of stuff. So we were all still friends and communicating every now and then, still making comments on each other's videos and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, believe it or not, people were missing Lorenzo. As much as they hated him, and as much as it could, as much as chaos he could, people were missing Lorenzo. I mean, do you remember when Bubba and Funky made a video about he didn't know who the father was? People even put up some people a random comment saying your, your father could be Lorenzo. <laughs> you know, Spike hasn't made a video on that. Barry Barry Stoner made a video of that. You know, they, they just made all these random comments and all these videos about who the father was of Bubba Dunn Funkin. That was an idea that I came up with, by the way. But um, Bubba Dunn Funkin got into it and he really um, made some videos out of it. But Lorenzo was still being mentioned at this time. And I say, Lorenzo's dead. He got shot by Spike Hazard and all that kind of stuff. He talking about gangster stuff. But, um... People were saying he was a great villain. So I thought to myself one day, you know, I'm sick of the buddy, the buddy, the bunny character. You know, we, we, I've started him off and I wish I never had. So I started working my work and my jobs in real life now and then, you know. The thing is, I was working for agencies and it was only temporary work. And, um... I was working from place to place, but I was also being made redundant, losing my job, losing my work. That's the problem with agency work. You don't know if your job's secure. So one one week I'd be extremely busy with my work and my social life. And the next minute I'd, I'd have free time on my hands to make videos. But anyway, I, I got made redundant again this one time. And uh, I got talking to the BDF network again. And we talked about Lorenzo. And we said to ourselves, you know, the fans are really missing this guy. What can we do to um, somehow involve him again? And that's how we come into the next chapter, everyone. The second story, which featured Lorenzo. I said to myself, let's bring Lorenzo back. How? He got killed by Spike Hazard. But around this time, I made the Spike Hazard character absent because I came up with the idea, okay, because I didn't want to play so many characters. I got the Spike Hazard character to get arrested on YouTube for going down for Lorenzo's murder. But by that time, I created a simple character, Barry Stoner. Now, Barry Stoner is an easy character to play. You just put on the beard, hold a bottle of vodka, act drunk, act like an idiot, and it worked, you know? I took the I took Spike Hazard off screen for a little while, and um, people were still talking about Lorenzo. So I thought to myself, let's do what the fans want. Let's bring back Lorenzo. Have a second storyline, have a second run. And we was thinking, how you know, we was coming up with all these ideas, you know. So I thought to myself. Um, Let's make it more interesting. Let's change his character. Let's bring him back from the dead. So if you notice, I was using the Buddy Bunny character to reintroduce Lorenzo. And I got in touch with the Hug Gang Network and he agreed. He said bringing back Lorenzo, Lorenzo would be a great idea. Because the fans miss him. They, you know, and plus we want to boost our subscribers up because people were... We enjoyed the acting. We enjoyed the performancing. And people were intrigued to see what happened, you know. So I decided to bring back Lorenzo. I put the mask back on. I changed his um, costume. Made went long black cloak like The Undertaker. Black hooded cloak. And I decided to bring him back as a dead character. Buddy the Bunny made his exit by leaving the mansion. And I thought that was one way to get rid of Buddy the Bunny. And then the second storyline took place. And Lorenzo came back as a ghost. And he wanted to uh, get revenge on BDF Network 
for what happened to him in the first story when he got killed off by Spike Hazard. Now, I said, what was Lorenzo's purpose going to be in this storyline? You know, what does he want? What's he going to be doing? And I came up with this idea of saying, okay, he wants to take over the BDF network as revenge. I spoke to BDF Network about this, and he says, let's do another rewrite. And um, we were keeping in contact with each other via Texas, sending each other all these um, emails and all these texts about random ideas for videos, and it was working. We wanted to get the Hood Gang Network in on it as well, because he wanted to join in again in the second, second run. Um, anyhow, he says he's going to take over the BDF Network. I changed the intro music, I changed the atmosphere, making it more ghostly scary, I did thunder in the background, some music and all that kind of stuff. Okay, here's your biggest thing. The fan mail we got was gigantic. Okay, it was fucking gigantic. Lorenzo's back, how can he be back? Why is he here? And all that business. Bubba Dunk Funky even made a video, um, a reaction video about his return. You know, and fans were happy that Lorenzo was coming back, and we didn't think we'd get that type of reaction. Okay, now I'm going to ask you your first question, because this was a question that everybody was talking about, the music. I can't remember where I got the music from. This is the truth. It's a royalty-free music. Just go on YouTube, type in royalty-free um, scary music or gar gargoyle music, and it came up. All the music we used this time was non copyright because the end of the Lorenzo storyline had a lot of um, copyright issues. And I was afraid it was going to get taken down. But it's non-copyright music, which we found on YouTube. I randomly found it, and I put it all together. It's one big intro. So there's your story. Um, people say, where did you get that music from? Like the, um, my man, baby. Like the soul music in the background. That's actually from a horror, mu horror movie called... Um, Ghost House. It's a horror movie made in the 80s and it's background music and I kind of edited it from the DVD and put it like into the, um, you know, the story, the background and it's really mixed really well and so that's, so there's that's to your question about the music. That's where I got it from. I got, I ripped it from a DVD from a 1980s horror movie called Ghost House or La Casa Free as it was once called. So his mission right now, Lorenzo, is to take over the BDF network. He wants to create the take over the BDF network, turn it into something positive. That was just his way of um, avoiding the real truth. He just wanted to get vengeance. Now, the hate mail I got, I even got death threats over this. <laughs> death threats at the fact that um, Lorenzo was going to try to take over the BDF network. The network that everyone adores on YouTube. I was like, this is my idea to make Lorenzo even more hated than he already is. And it worked. People sitting in the hate mass saying, you're never going to take over the BDF network. We hate like you, Lorenzo. You'll never hack into it. You'll never take over it. And I've got to tell you, I had a lot of respect for the BDF network for this because um, they was continuing to make all these videos of how Lorenzo was going to get revenge on everybody one by one. I was like, okay, what's the first idea we can come up with? I know, you can curse people. So we started this cursing angle where Nicky Nuttaball got captured and put in the outside world. The talking Mr. Jingles, Cat, talking PG, cursing Jim Funkin to make him end up in prison. You know, these were all blackmailing tricks by Lorenzo until he gave in to surrender the BDF network. And this was going on for weeks and weeks and weeks. But I noticed in the um, in the fan base, people were really getting into it. There was, there was people putting on their own masks and creating their own YouTube channels. They wanted to get into the storyline themselves. They wanted to join in which we thought was great. We inspired so many YouTubers to try and join in on the storyline. It was fucking great. <laughs> and we're overwhelmed to think that we actually inspired people to actually do these sort of things. 
you know, it was, um, you know, it was, it was kind of a good thing to do. I mean, I will at the end try and um, tell some of these characters in this by, by telling them who we're talking about. But one that comes into my head is like the Pi Network and um, Koga Obama. You know, and all those others that really got inspired by it. Okay. Now, the thing is, how do we get the Hugan Network involved in this? The Hugan Network said, let's get him another henchman. And that's how we came up with Vasilius the Gruesome. But he wanted to go his own ways, like creating like versus videos and um, all these other type of characters. And um, I, I carried on with my feuding videos with BDF Network, and BDF Network um, did these things, you know, to try and um, keep up the storylines with the Hood Gang Network. So BDF Network had a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do. I mean, he had, he was trying to create storylines with me. He was trying to create storylines with the Hood Gang Network. It was, it was fucking crazy. I don't know how he found all the time and the effort to do all this. That's why I respect the guy so much because he's just dedicated to make people laugh and all that. And you can't help but respect somebody for that. But the storyline was going on and going on. We'd all created the hate, the hate, the tension, the darkness to Lorenzo and all that kind of stuff. We, But we had fun doing it. That was the main thing. We had fun. Now, coming towards the end of this, We said to ourselves, how is Lorenzo going to be stopped this time? Because there's only so much time you got to keep these storylines going. I was struggling to think how, what we were going to come up with, what idea we were going to think of to try and make Lorenzo, uh, you know, get killed because we was running out of ideas by this time. Now, here's the thing that caused a little bit of controversy. The Hood Gang Network, there was a time where I couldn't get in touch with him. And we thought to ourselves, well, he's already created Vasilius the Gruesome. Shouldn't he get killed off first before Lorenzo? Because Lorenzo's the main deal here. He's like the main leader, the main boss. We could not get hold of the Hood Gang Network. And me and um, the BDF Network were like, well, who do you think should get killed off first, Lorenzo or Vasilius the Gruesome? And he says, oh, definitely Vasilius the Gruesome, because he's like the henchman, he should get killed off first. So this caused like a bit of a problem. Uh, we was like, who's going to get killed off first? Now, I made all my videos in advance. I just uploaded them on different days. For example, if I came home on a Friday, I'd get them recording on a Saturday or a Sunday, you know, and keep them under a file so I can release them sometime in the week, next week, to keep things going, you know, rolling. And um, Hug Gang Network was like under the impression, like, I'm loving the Basilius Gruesome character. I don't really want to kill him off. So I said to myself, okay, we will kill Lorenzo off first. Basilius the Gruesome is still going to this very day, but I think he's uploaded a YouTube video with Tommy Patcher as Bobby Dunfunkin's son. To try and kill off um, Vasilius the Gruesome. But um, I said to myself, okay, let's do another rewrite. Because we just had the, um, the go ahead to um, kill Lorenzo off by then. I said, let's not kill Lorenzo off, let's trap his soul. So I introduced a box. And in reality, the box was given to me by my grandma and her will. <laughs> but really, we decided to make it like a soul box. Steve the Devil says, okay, I'll make it the box. Jim Funky will send it to Spike Hazard. Spike Hazard will get out of prison. Him and Barry Stone together will go and um, back to Lorenzo's house because um, Steve the Devil made him back human again. And that's what happened. See the video, the end of Lorenzo the Dead. That video took me a long time to do. In the process, I got Buddy the Bunny killed because I didn't want to play his character anymore. Um, what else was there? We, we, 
I, it took me ages, and this was a long, long, long thing to shoot and long, a long time to record. It was very complicated. And plus, I wanted to involve little clips of the BDF network involved in it, which I did with them celebrating at the end with the hookers and all that kind of stuff. And same with um, George Anonymous something, sorry. Anonymous something um, was dancing along in the routine in the video and all that. So Lorenzo's not dead. He's just trapped in a soul box. And he's got to remain locked at all times because if you open the box, Lorenzo will come out again and he'll be back to normal again. So people are saying to myself, okay, does that mean that there's going to be a third run with Lorenzo? I'm going to put it to you right now, guys. I don't know what the future's going to hold with Lorenzo. He's not dead. He's just trapped in a box. And if that box opens, he comes back. I have no plans of bringing back Lorenzo at the moment because I'm busy in life with other things. But we don't know what the future holds. Could he come back? It's a possibility. But unless we come up with some good ideas and some good gags, we're not going to do it. Okay, so uh, many of you are saying, is Lorenzo going to come back? We don't know. At this stage, it's a no. But who knows? Time will tell. You don't know what the future holds. Things just change. So there could be a third run with Lorenzo. You just don't know these things. And that's the future about Lorenzo. I mean, Spike has the bow stone. are still continuing their um, channel. The box is in their possession. BDF Network's carrying on with their thing. The Organ Network's still carrying on with his thing about Vasilius the Gruesome and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a feud and that's still going on today. But um, that's the way it is. I mean, the next section I want to move on to is the fans. I just want to thank you for all your support. Me, BDF Network, the whole gang network, really appreciate all the fans, love and subscribers that you guys have really been showing us. And the fact that we could inspire so many um, people to make um, characters to um, actually, you know, take part in the storyline, you know, still creating characters. We've got one guy in a Jason hockey mask. We've got a guy in an alien mask. We've got a guy in a monkey mask. We've got all these different people who are trying to make this fan base and, and you know, <laughs> it's an overwhelming thing and a very funny thing. Some people supported Lorenzo because I loved his character. He was one of those guys that you love to hate. But, um, Overall, me and BDF Network and our gang network, we all get along as well as friends, but we just find different time patterns, different schedules to try and talk to each other and all that kind of stuff. So the uh, future of Lorenzo is um, at the moment unknown. He's not dead, he's just trapped. But uh, that's the way I wanted to end it. I did all the um, editing. Of course, I, as, I, as I played Spike, Barry, Lorenzo and Buddy the Bunny, I had to Made that video all on my own. And it, we uploaded to BDF Network's channel, Lorenzo's channel, Spike House's channel, so that other people can have different ways of watching it. Um, I hope people enjoyed it. I'm just really apologising it didn't turn out as well as people thought it would be, but due to our schedule, we just did our best to try and make everybody happy. And, you know, it worked for some people, some people it didn't because. I realised a lot of people gave the video down. There must have been something about the video that they didn't enjoy or maybe we rushed it or something like that. But we just really wanted to get it over and done with to get on with our own personal lives. But we hope we didn't do it up to the point where it ruined everything. Okay. So the question on everyone's mind is, will Lorenzo have a third run? I honestly don't know. If I was to find free time, if we was to come up with some good ideas, people are sending ideas about a third run with Lorenzo, saying, oh yeah, he gets released from the box and he, he wants to take over the BDF network again, but that's like repeating what you've already done. Until we come up with some good or solid ideas, we're not going to make a third run with Lorenzo. It all depends. I don't mind playing Lorenzo again. But as long as it's done right, and as long as we have the time to do it, we don't know what our schedules are in, in reality. And there's more to life than making videos on YouTube. There's a big world out there. 
We want to get laid. We want to go to work. You know, it's just one of those things. You know, but I plan on taking a huge break now from the um, from the characters. We haven't seen the last of them. You never see the last of these characters, especially when the blood so much. But um, yeah, it's 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 been one hell of a ride, and I plan on making a video thanking fans for all the support. And I'm going to give them shout outs to their own personal channel for getting involved in this. It's been great listening to video responses and um, people encouraging us to, um, you know, make them keep going. You know, some people believed it was all different people, and some people thought the feud was serious. Was the acting really that good? You know, we was like, calm down. You know, it's all entertainment. <laughs> it's just entertainment. We don't really hate each other. I'm not really trying to hack into a beloved network or YouTube channels to erase it. It's just to make me hated in storytelling ways. Entertainment only. But, you know, some people take things too seriously. People wasn't even aware that I played all the characters. But indeed I did. So now you know in this, in this documentary that you know the um, real truth now. I'm going to go ahead now, people, because this documentary has been going on for nearly an hour. I hope I've answered all your questions. I'm expanding the intro. The Spike and Barry character, the Lorenzo character, the BDF network, the whole gang network. I've talked about the first story, the second story, the behind the scenes, the fans and the future. So um, I hope everything that I've explained has been covered. And uh, please subscribe to the BDF network. Please subscribe to the whole gang network. And if you want to subscribe to my original channel, the link is in the description. Okay. So uh, thanks for sending all your love and um, support, guys, of ours. We appreciate all your fan mail, and um, we'll see where we go from here. We don't know what the future holds. Anything can change. But depending on our schedule and what we're actually getting through in real life, you just simply don't know. Okay. We've got some um, fan mail already. So people saying thanking us from Miss Latino Heat and Buzz Not 33 and some other YouTube profiles thanking us. Really appreciate that. If you leave your thoughts and comments below in this video, maybe you'll get a shout out in another fan base video. Who knows? But uh, just leave all your thoughts and comments below and um, email us if you have any questions, guys and babes. We're always open to fan mail questions, but now you know the truth to Lorenzo. You know the truth to the whole storylines. You know what happened behind the scenes. But if you have any questions or you feel like I've missed anything out, please ask us below and we will get back to you when we have the time. Okay. That's basically it. All I have to say, guys, about it. We're just down to one minute left. Um, if, we have, if we have missed anything, feel free. Ask the question. I will be soon to get back to you about it in, you know, in real life as soon as we can. But I've introduced the masks, so Spike Hazard's mask, Lorenzo's mask, um, Barry Stoner's attire, everything. It's all there. And we're going to keep the videos up so you can just, um, you know, continually watch them. You know, the storylines of Lorenzo feuding with Bubba Dunn Funkin on the, um, the whole gang network and all that kind of stuff. So... We're going to keep them up for your viewing entertainment. Okay. That's it. So feel free to send in all your comments, guys and babes, and um, we appreciate all your love and support. Sorry if some of you took it the wrong way about them being separate people, but no, it was Adam A.K. and Cena guy all along. <laughs> You know, it was, it's funny that people thought it was a different actor playing the characters and all that kind of stuff. But I, my favourite part of the whole thing has been entertaining and um, putting on all these videos for your entertainment and people actually getting all the hate mail and all the support. I'm glad it turned out really, really well. You know, do you have a favourite character? Do you have anything you want to say? Please list it tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Please list it all in the comments comment below um who knows a future video may be made out of it but i'm gonna go now we've got five seconds left so um 
Go ahead, guys. Leave it all below. We should get back to you. Peace out.